Call of the Night is an anime I decided to watch for the summer season of 2022. I believe it was the most popular new anime of the summer and I heard great things about the manga so I decided to give it a chance and I didn't hate it but I don't know if I can confidently say it was worth the watch yet. One thing you need to know about me is I love Battle Shonen because they tend to have great fights, creative world building, breathtaking adventures, and interesting characters. While Call of the Night is shonen, it isn't a battle shonen, so that may explain why it didn't perfectly fit within my tastes. Nevertheless, I hope I can provide a somewhat objective review in order to determine if this anime was truly worth the watch or if it was a huge waste of time. Body, body, Let's start off this review by talking about the protagonist, Ko Yamori, because there were a few things I liked about him, but there were a lot of things I didn't. For one, he was just a really bland character. It's not like he's the first bland protagonist I've seen, but I really wasn't able to connect with Ko in any way at the beginning, so it was much more difficult for me to follow his journey. He's a boy who doesn't know what love is, but he needs to fall in love with a vampire in order to become one. I was somewhat okay with this introduction, but some details later on made me confused about who this boy truly is. Two characters get introduced later on and they claim to be his friends, yet he didn't seem to recognize them as friends. Maybe I misunderstood those interactions, but it seemed like he completely forgot that he ever had friendships in the past. As I watched more episodes, I felt like I lost more and more understanding of who this boy is. Some questions I still have about him are, if he doesn't know what love is, does that mean he doesn't love his parents? Does Code not care about leaving his parents behind in order to become a vampire? And why did he never try to figure out what love was prior to meeting Nazuna? Ko isn't the first anime protagonist I've seen with the goal of trying to figure out what love is. I believe that would be Violet Evergarden for me, and I didn't have a problem with her goal for a few reasons. First, she was much easier to understand as she grew up during war as a weapon. It made sense that she would have issues with comprehending certain emotions and feelings. Also, it seemed to be something she wanted to figure out as soon as possible, like it was an urgent matter while Ko seemed like he didn't really care if he ever found out what love was. The only reason why he wanted to figure it out was because it was a requirement to fall in love with a vampire in order to become one. Speaking of his goal, I have very mixed feelings about Ko's desire to become a vampire. This objective was introduced in the first episode and at the time I knew very little about his character nor the true reasons as to why he he would even want this. From my understanding, he was bored and detached from life, but he really enjoyed his nightlife with Nazuna, and he wanted to have that enjoyment all the time. However, that alone wasn't sufficient enough for me to believe he would want to become a vampire, so I assumed we'd dive more into his past and see why becoming a vampire was a necessity for him, and that never really happened. I'm sort of conflicted on how I feel about this because on one hand, I'm interested in learning more about his character and figuring out why he feels like he needs this, but on the other hand, I don't really get the feeling that we are building towards figuring out that mystery. Now, I've only seen the first 13 episodes of the series, so that may have been presumptive of me to say, but that's just how I feel at the moment. Instead of focusing on Ko's past, it seems like we're focusing on the upsides and downsides of vampires, nightlife, love, past friendships, and random slice of life events. I don't completely hate the protagonist, as he is far from the worst one I've seen, I just found it really difficult to connect with him on multiple levels. However, he isn't a deal breaker for the series, as there were many other elements that I did enjoy. One of those being the female lead, Nazuna Nanakuza. She had a very mysterious presence when she was first introduced, and it seemed like she was just trying to help this clueless kid enjoy the night. I, of course, was suspicious of her when she invited Ko home and tried to sleep with him, and my suspicions ended up being well-founded because she was revealed to be a vampire. I didn't really read any synopsis of this anime or anything, so I was really shocked to see the anime go in that direction. That's the moment she transitioned from being a somewhat creepy, weird, mysterious girl to being a very interesting supernatural vampire. She's the main catalyst that pushed Ko into pursuing a future as a vampire. It can sometimes be difficult to understand her as well, but I don't have as much of a problem with that as I sort of see her as an element of chaos in a way. She just does whatever makes herself happy and doesn't care too much about the consequences. It's obvious that she does care about Ko and that she potentially even loves him already. I thought that it was very sweet how at the end, she said she wanted to become a vampire worth falling for because it demonstrated that she actually had empathy towards another person. So 
much so that she doesn't want the first and potentially last person Ko falls in love with to be full of flaws. I really like this ending because it conveyed that they would both be putting effort into falling in love with each other rather than it just being one-sided. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this anime wasn't what I was used to because I tend to like battle shonen anime. I love the action, adventure, and world building those anime tend to have. Call of the Night did have amazing action scenes in a couple of episodes and those were the most thrilling for me, but most episodes had more of a slice of life feel. I'm not saying those episodes were completely boring, but I'm saying that those episodes just weren't as appealing to me personally. If the action greatly enhances the anime for you like it does for me, then I'm sure that you would feel the same way about this anime. It's not like it's bad and it's not like I didn't enjoy the non-action episodes, it's just the peak of this anime for me was the action scenes. This show doesn't have adventure in the traditional sense like One Piece, Hunter x Hunter, Naruto, etc. where the characters go to various new locations and discover new and interesting cultures, environments, and lifestyles. Instead, it's about exploring the night which is something that is new for the protagonist. These adventures aren't grandiose, but it allows you to stop and appreciate some of the lesser magnificent parts of life by making it appear more significant than it actually is. Some examples of these are walking around under a really beautiful night sky and going to a pool at night. These situations sound basic, but the art and animation of the show really enhance the experience by making you appreciate it more than you otherwise would. Call of the Night does have some world building, but not as much as most battle shonen, since the setting is very much based on the real world. The only major divergence were the vampires, so to me they were simultaneously one of the most interesting and most frustrating parts of the story. It was just somewhat annoying when Ko was thinking about not going through with becoming a vampire, and he wasn't even thinking about the repercussions of that action. He should have known that he would be killed if he decided to turn his back now in order for them to live in secrecy, but that wasn't even a consideration. I can't remember all of my frustrations with vampires right now since I didn't write them all down and I'm making this script months after I finished the show, but there definitely were more. But on the contrary, I'm also very interested in learning more about these vampires, like why Ko's blood tasted delicious and that one detective woman's blood tasted disgusting, and why is there a one year limit on becoming a vampire? I have so many questions and inquiries about this show and I cannot wait to see how it all gets addressed if we get another season. I assume we will since Call of the Night was relatively popular. Another thing I really enjoyed about this anime was the music. Both the opening and the ending were among some of the best anime themes to come out in 2022, both visually and musically. I'm not gonna lie, one of my favorite parts of watching this show weekly was seeing the lemon spinning on that disc because I knew I was gonna hear something hype. The greatest thing about having an opening thing that is also so hype is that I am jamming too hard to the song to even notice any of the spoilers the opening may have. Honestly, the only part of the opening I got spoilers from was the section where the music slows down a bit and you see a bunch of people who would later be introduced in later episodes. The fast and crazy animation really captured the chaoticness of Nazuna stepping into Cole's life. Just all around, it's great music that had the essence of the show in mind. I know I had a lot of negative things to say about this anime, but I actually really enjoyed Call of the Night. I understand the genre may not fit my specific taste, which is why my opinions on the show probably differ from others. If you haven't already watched the show yet and you are this far into the video, I would say that this anime won't be a waste of time even if you are a shonen tard like myself. I am kind of tired of the slice of life genre because it feels generic, but Call of the Night has a lot of new, refreshing elements that you would probably enjoy, so I'd say it's worth a watch. At least see the first episode and decide if you want to continue from there. Like I said earlier, I don't know if this show will get a second season since I haven't seen anything announced yet, but if it does, I'm definitely going to watch it. Until then, let me know in the comments what you thought of this anime or of my review. Peace out.